So you're saying I can ask this cat any question? The cat is connected to the computer. You just type in the question, and it will read his mind. There the answer comes. You're the man! I've been looking for this for weeks. Given f of x and g of x, we want to find the composite function f of g and then determine the domain of the composite function f of g. We do need to be careful when determining the domain of composite functions. The domain of the composite function f of g of x must contain the restrictions of the domain of the inner function g of x and the restrictions on the composite function. So it's important to consider the domain of the inner function as well as the composite function to determine the correct domain of f of g of x. So to start off, let's write our composite function using this definition here. So f of g, sometimes written like this or even like this, can be written as f of g of x. Using this notation, we can easily see that the inner function will be g of x. So before we go any further, let's determine the domain of g of x. We'll notice that g of x is just a linear function, which means there are no restrictions on the domain, therefore the domain would be all real numbers. Over one or two, using interval notation, we could express this as the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. So notice that there are no restrictions on the domain of g of x, which means we can go ahead and determine the composite function and the domain of the composition will be the domain of f of g. And since g of x is equal to 3x minus 2, we'll perform this substitution for g of x, so this will become f of the quantity 3x minus 2. So notice how, so notice how 3x minus 2 becomes the input into function f. And since f of x is equal to the quantity x plus 2 squared, this becomes the quantity 3x minus 2 plus 2 squared. Here we have a minus 2 plus 2, that's equal to 0. So this simplifies to 3x squared, which is equal to 9x squared. So our composite function, f of g, is equal to 9x squared. Notice how this is a quadratic function, and the domain of a quadratic function is also all real numbers. Therefore, we can conclude the domain of our composite function is all real numbers. So this is one example where if we did not consider the domain of the inner function, or g of x, we would have been okay by just finding the domain of our composite function. But what we'll see in the next few examples is this is not always the case. So it is important that we also consider the restrictions on the inner function.